Hello all. Some of you may remember this beauty. It's my retractable hinged guide rail from a workbench. As my benches are in the middle of the shop, the workbench serving as an outfeed for the table saw, it's important to me that the rail and front pin can easily be slid out of the way, keeping bench top clear without any disassembly. I do though want to make some changes to it, upgrades in a way, that address a few niggles. In covering these, hopefully it will better serve as a guide if you want to build something like it for yourself. On top of flipping over this well-worn MFT top, let's quickly bang through what needs sorting first. The original front pin is quite oversized and set into the bench top a ways to avoid the subframe underneath. I want to cut the pin down a bit and relocate it to the very front of the bench. This should up my cutting capacity with the fence in place from around 500mm to 600 Doing this, I'll also need the rail to come right to the front of the bench. It stops about 50mm or so short currently. This will mean flipping my hinge mounting plate to free up some rail length at the rear. I also want some way to lock the rail at the back for a given height. As it is, if I run the saw to the back of the guide rail, it can tilt and the saw nibbles the bench top. When I first made this contraption, I didn't have the bench dog's fences you see here. The right side fence scale can't be set accurately due to my rail position. It's 20mm out, so shifting the whole guide rail assembly to the left so I can make use of the scale left and right will be a bonus. That, I think, is it, so let's get it done. The only thing I'll be properly swapping out are the rubber V-wheels and tracks for a proper linear rail with bearings. I'm lucky enough to have two types at one metre length here, left over from various past creations and tinkerings. A quick word on the two types. Starting with these round bar types, I'm not really sold on. They have their uses, but I find them not particularly smooth, and even when you try to eliminate the slop with the top and side grub screws in the bearing blocks, they still have play. Even when these blocks are mounted to a thick alley plate between two rails, say, you can still detect unwanted torsional movement. These kinds of square profile ones are different altogether. They're more expensive, but the bearing blocks slide smooth and have, by comparison, no detectable play at all. I'll be using this for the guide rail. Disassemble first then. If you have Bosch or Maffel rails, you'll know the underside slots are super slim. I use these type of flat sliding T-nuts to attach the rail to the plate. They're the type made for 20mm alley profiles. Top tip that one. Using these V-wheels and homemade tracks is really cost effective and work perfectly. My main reason for changing them out for a linear rail is the hardened steel on the linear rail will provide me an easy central locking point as you'll see shortly. I'll link my original video in the description and at the end for those of you wanting to see how I made the V-wheel tracks and my hinge plate. Just ripping off the tracks here so I can reuse the ply to mount the new linear rail. My linear rail is the fairly small 12mm type. The bearing blocks take tiny M3 screws and having no play benefit from some careful layout. 4 at 20 by 20 mm centres. I do have a load of hex head M3 Allen screws, but the head accepting a 2mm Allen, they round off way too easy. If I can avoid using them, I do, and use these M3 bolts instead. I can apply a little more torque with these. I've added a nut under the head as a spacer in the absence of appropriate length bolts. If you ever buy any of these linear rails, you'll likely find they come with these little plastic stops, especially if the rail comes with bearing blocks attached. Don't throw them away. They serve as easy on and offable end stops and save your blocks coming off and losing the multitude of tiny bearings all over the floor. I'll be using them as stops top and bottom. These bench dogs right side or waist side fences have a scale whose first number marking is at 50mm, the end of the fence rail side being essentially a 40mm marker. I'm going to aim to give myself a good 50 to 60mm clearance as I mark the new rail position with a pencil. Rail slots marked, I centre the ply rip to them and put in one screw. Then use a digital level box zeroed to the bench top to set it at 90 degrees. Then fix with more screws. Same deal setting the linear rail. I've got the attached guide rail resting on the level box which, conveniently, is the same as my max cut height so as to position the first screw. Then, again, employ the level box to set the linear rail 90 degrees to the bench top. It's important that in relation to the bench top, the rails are straight up and down. If they were askew, you might be dead square cutting a piece of 12mm ply, but by the time you've lifted the guide rail to cut something like 50mm thick, you'd be off by a little, and that's no good. The guide rail is sticking up just proud of the bench top there, so having loosened it, I slide it back on the mounting plate a little. Cinched back up, the guide rail now has a slight overhang at the front, which is ideal, plus when slid down out the way, is clear of the bench top. See how the guide rail leans back there when down? I lucked out on a neat fix for that. 
turns out these plastic cap thumb screws and a one mil washer created the perfect standoff, stopping the rail leaning back too much. I even already had holes in the right position for them in the plate. I don't get luck like that often, so I'll take it. Moving on, good a time as any to whip the top off. Then I can remove the front pin assembly to receive its own makeover. It was while considering my options for this, I discovered the perfect star knob for a height lock. This is a spare from my woodpecker's feather boards, M6 nut fixed to it and screwed into an already existing central M6 tapped hole. As it's turned, it clamps down onto the steel linear rail, locking the assembly in place. Simple, minimal effort solution. And colour coded, happy with that. Top flipped and on again, I can tackle the pin. So nice to have a clean top again, even if it'll only stay that way for five minutes. So the front pin obviously needs to hold the guide rail perfectly square to whatever you're referencing, the fence in my case. Seemed to me the best layout assistant for this was the guide rail square, fixed to the rail and clamped to the fence. As done at the rear earlier, I use its position to make a rough pencil mark for the rail slot and pin. Then make a cutaway in the bench front. The pin, in how it works, is essentially unchanged from my original. All I've done is cut some width from the pin and slimmed down its mount. The pin is solid 8mm thick alley plate, now 12mm in width. Slimmer, but still rock solid. Again, mentioned in my original vid, the end of the pin was meticulously filed to around 7.25mm for a perfect fit in the guide rail slot, a process best not rushed. This will be its new position at the bench front. Yes, that cutaway in the bench is excessive. When I did it, I was toying with an idea to have the height lock controllable from the front. It didn't work, now I have a big cutout and I'm on a temporary prescription for copium. Anyway, guide rail down and squared again, it's the same drill as before with the level box. This time though, it's not only checked for 90 degrees to the bench top, but kept square to it also. Square as in line with the guide rail. Any bad alignment here will throw you out a little at different heights. Position and alignment triple checked. I dab on some super glue in a few spots to hold it in place. Then get a bunch of steel brackets on. Two each top and bottom. Very last thing to tweak then is fence position. Because I can, I set the height front and rear to a piece of 12mm ply. Then loosen off the fences. You might notice I have a star knob on the short wayside fence and double up as in screw top and bottom hex screws in the fence dogs for the main fence. I find using the single star knob fixing option can mean your fence dogs can be knocked when moved or stored. Doubling them up with proper bolts holds them fast. Just a heads up. No fancy trick for setting the scale, just a tape and tapping it this way or that. For the right side fence, you have to allow for the blade curve when setting a scale. You can use the saw blade itself, or if you have them, use a straw bite workshop wayside jig as I have here. Quick check then. I set my flag stop to 450mm and it came out just that. Looks good and square too. Same check for the waist side, which I set to 100mm. This did take me two or three adjustments to get right, but however many it takes really, innit? As long as it ends up bang on. That's the build and adjustments all over now. All I'm doing here is a five cut test to check for square if you want to stick around. I'll try and keep it all one take and just speed through some bits. As you saw, first cut edge gets marked so I know where I am. Then turn the cut progressively until the mark side comes back around. You'll see I'm blowing under the rail between cuts there. Not always necessary, just want to give the setup its best chance of producing square. When the mark side comes around, the fifth cut, I make sure to cut off a measurable rip. And there's my measurable slither with the mark on it. On the verniers, it lines up perfectly at 13.02mm at one end. And precisely 13mm the other. Two hundredths over 190mm length. In woodworking terms, that is exactly square, and I'm more than happy with that. I did this exercise three times too, and was never more than 0.04 out, so stoked about that. 
as a double triple check I measured the diagonals of the board which came out at approximately 308 mil then the same for length and width you'll see I was undecided on the width at 188 or 187.5 mil either way with these numbers given those of you who know the maths will know that's within a hair of checking out dead square especially with room for discrepancy hand measuring like this so jobs are good and all the minor niggles for my original address this setup is ready for work on some table and desk designs i hope you found this interesting or insightful even if you saw the original if you've only watched this video and are interested in making something similar do go back and watch the original as it may well cover anything missing here please go ahead and share this video with anyone you think might be interested hit like if you did and sub if you aren't already I ask for no support on this channel, but it'd be silly not to mention the thanks button is there below if you feel inclined to show your appreciation in that way. Feel free to ask any questions or to banter in the comments below, and as always, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching.